We've talked about some of the best reptile substrates and today we're gonna to be talking about some of the worst. So I've recently been looking into a bunch of different substrates uh, that I hear that can be dangerous and I want to see how many really seem to be based on different people's experiences and then different facts just about the actual substrate. And in my opinion, uh, I highly advise that you don't use any of the six substrates we'll be talking about. But first off, it's an interesting one and I was kind of confused by it and that is cedar and pine substrate. Now this is weird because I'm in North Carolina and there's cedars and pines everywhere and I think the white pine is actually the state tree. And in those pine filled areas, I know there's plenty of like tree frogs and small lizards and turtles and all sorts of things. So I was really surprised that people, or I'm still really surprised that so many people always say that you shouldn't use pine or cedar. But after looking more into it, it makes sense. So both cedar and pine are softwoods and they both actually contain a chemical called nef, nef, nepheline or nepheline. Nepheline. So someone was actually testing the woods and the chemicals to see how they affect animals and they found that when the animals were living on the pine and cedar substrates they ended up having problems with their skin and their eyes and their nose and their mouth because they were just basically runny and it looked like they had some sort of respiratory problem and they were breaking out on their skin and having skin irritation and all sorts of things. So it turns out the chemical doesn't actually directly harm you but it does break away and kill some of the cells that are inside your respiratory uh, system. So of course the respiratory system is what basically fights off germs and fights off bacteria in your body. So when the respiratory systems were deteriorating, they ended up getting all sorts of different illnesses because they just really weren't strong enough to fight those illnesses off. And this was caused by the cedar and pine. Also, it's a bit unclear as to why this doesn't happen in the wild, but it appears it's because like in any enclosure, you're gonna have glass walls and although you can have uh, ventilation, basically all of the fumes and stuff are still gonna be trapped in here somehow and you really can't escape it. However, if you do wanna use some wood substrates, uh, I highly recommend Cypress and Aspen. I use Cypress, which I use the brand uh, Forest Floor made by Zoomed. I use that in three of my enclosures right now. And then I use Aspen in just one actually. So I actually looked a lot online and I couldn't actually find any substrates made for reptiles or amphibians that had uh, the cedar or pine in it. And you can just always check the bag and see, it'll say what kind of what it actually is. If it says cypress or aspen, you'll be just fine. So next up we've got sand and I just recently talked about sand because I did a video on impaction. If you don't know what impaction is, you can go watch that video right now. But basically sand can cause impaction, which I think most people know of but I went more into depth than this in the previous video. However, I do have a few things to add on to that. So sand does cause impaction, which a lot of people already know. Some people still do use sand, but as you probably know by now, in my opinion, you shouldn't use sand and I don't use it anymore with any of my reptiles because I don't want to take the risk. But there are a few extra details I want to add that people tend to argue when uh, I say or other people say you shouldn't use sand. So what a lot of people say is sand is just fine because that's what a lot of animals naturally live on. Like if you go look at the habitats of some lizards, you will find sand. And there's two things about this. Firstly, an animal out in the wild can get away from that sand. They can go bask on a rock or go into a grassy area or go into a tree, depending on their species and their area. And if you do have an animal in sand, like say my leopard gecko, when I had him on sand, it was just all sand. There was nowhere he could go. He could go sit on his hide, but then he doesn't have access to his um, water bowl really and his food bowl it would be hard to get to. And then his heat pad he couldn't get to either. And I actually noticed he was on his hide like all the time when I had sand in there. Then the second reason that makes a lot of sense on why you shouldn't use sand and other certain things has been brought up by Andrew, the person that likes to irritate people in the comment section. And that is if something is in an animal's natural environment, it doesn't mean it's necessarily good. It might not actually benefit them. And you might have noticed animals in captivity almost always have longer lifespans compared to those out in the wild because you can get rid of certain hazards. So yeah, that's number two, sand. A lot of people use it. I don't recommend using it, but you can look more into that if you like and see other videos on it. Next relating to that is calci sand. Now this is probably one of the worst on the list. And I know a lot of other channels have talked about calcium sand before. And basically it's sand, but I don't know if it's made out of calcium or if it's just like covered in calcium. But either way, it's made so that animals can get their calcium just by licking their substrate and eating it. But it turns out, according to a lot of people online, that it can still cause impaction. 
Animals like leopard geckos, for example, can sense calcium and they know when they need more of it. So they might start licking at their substrate and this isn't a good thing because it can, again, cause impaction. And the other problem is geckos and other animals tend to just lick at stuff so they, if they start accidentally eating that substrate, they can't actually get too much calcium and too much of anything is dangerous, but too much of a vitamin or mineral is really dangerous, especially to reptiles. So there's plenty of mixed opinions on the sand, but I highly do not recommend the calcium sand. So next up on the list is gravel, and Franklin's gonna help me out with this. And gravel also has the same danger as sand, but it's really common to use with turtles. Usually I'd say gravel is probably fine because turtles will eat on the top of their water or the top of their enclosure because their food will float, but there is always that danger that they can go down and nibble on something on the substrate and they might ingest a little bit of gravel, which they can't digest, so this can also impact them. But an easy fix for this is, okay, calm down. So as you can see right here, I've got a gravel is very fine and very small pieces, and if Franklin's in this, then he can consume it because it's small enough to fit in his mouth. However, I do have these larger pieces, and you can buy just larger gravel uh, and basically stones, and it's more like pebbles. It can do the same job, but he can't actually like if he tried to eat this, it wouldn't actually fit in his mouth and there's no danger he would just have to spit it out because he can't swallow it. So yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say you shouldn't use gravel, but if you do want to be extra safe, just make sure whatever they're on uh, gravel-wise is bigger than what they can actually consume. So the final one I'm going to be talking about is walnut shells. And I actually got something wrong about this. Uh, I was replying to some of you that were asking about the walnut shells and I told you that it causes impaction and I don't actually think it does. However, it is still very dangerous because although it looks nice and soft and fluffy and it looks pretty nice, it looks just like some sort of natural soil, but it turns out basically the walnut shells are blended up really fine and each of those little fragments, you can look on them, they're actually sharp. I've never used walnut shells and I've never actually felt it myself, but according to some people in some forums, if you say like rub it around in your hands or just look at it, you can tell it's basically like broken glass in a way. If your animal were to accidentally ingest this while eating or whatever, just the same things as sand, it's not gonna impact them, but it's so sharp that it can actually cut the insides of their mouth and even cut their organs and different things that the substrate's gonna travel through. So for this reason, I would never recommend walnut shells for any reason because of this danger. And unfortunately it is available from quite a few distributors. So those are the six substrates that I highly do not recommend that you use. Again, those are cedar, pine, sand, calcium sand, gravel, and it, of course it depends on the size, and then crushed up walnut shells. So unfortunately, this wasn't the most positive video, but I do think it's important to learn about the different risks in substrate. Again, if you'd like to see some of my favorite substrates to use, you can go watch that video, which is, I think I uploaded like a few weeks ago, and you can just look online or ask me, or anyone in the comments because I'm sure there's plenty of other great options or alternatives if you're looking for something like something that I put on this Is it working? I hope my battery went out mid-shot and sometimes when that happens the file corrupts. I think we're okay this time so I don't have to re-record this. But anyway, in the comments if you do know of other dangerous substrates that you should avoid for certain reptile or amphibian or just any other animal species, make sure to let me and others know in the comments so we can all improve our husbandry and make sure our animals are healthy. But that's it. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Alex, and I reversed my outro. But that's it for this video. I'm Alex, and thanks for watching.